Well, it's a very warm welcome and thank you for joining us on this independent off-tube studio commentary. It is the final day of the season. Manchester City uh, taking on Aston Villa and a very straightforward equation for Manchester City. They know that if they win the game today, uh, they will be champions. Anything other than that, and they do leave the door wide open for Liverpool, who of course will be doing everything they can uh, to get three points at home to Wolverhampton Wanderers. It's myself, Paul Shabakovic, and Matt Guy taking you through the action. Matt, it should be not just for these two games, but it should be a fascinating end of the season today. Yeah, absolutely. It's going to be a cracking uh, final day of the season, not just top of the table, but top four race relegation battles as well. We'll keep a, an eye on the scores around the grounds as we go through this game. But on paper, it's simple, simple for City. If you take the context of it being the final day out of it, of course, there'll be nerves, but there's a party up atmosphere at the Etihad and you would expect City to do it. You certainly would. I think that uh, from Villa's point of view, they're going to try and do everything they can. They've had a very good season and I think Stephen Gerrard would probably admit that for the good start his side have had, he probably would like them to be perhaps three or four places higher than what they currently are. Villa starting the day in uh, 14th, but a win for them could see them go as uh, far as uh, 10th place, depending on the results uh, elsewhere. Uh, City are in possession now just to keeping things on the half line. Just to remind you very quickly, Edison is in goal for Man City with a back four of John Stones, Fernandinho, Emmerick Laporte and João Cancelo. Three in midfield, Kevin De Bruyne, uh, Rodrigo and Bernardo Silva with Riyad Mahrez, Phil Foden and Gabriel Jesus uh, as the attacking three for Villa. Robin Olsen gets his first uh, league start of the season in goal. It's a back four of Matt Cash, Callum Chambers, Tyrone Mings and Luca Dina with uh, John McGinn, uh, Douglas Luiz and Jacob Ramsey as the midfield three. Emiliano Buendia and Felipe Coutinho are playing just behind uh, Ollie Watkins and all ten Premier League games are available on our service uh, this afternoon. If you want to sort of dip in and out of uh, a few other commentaries and of course any goals that we hear about uh, we will let you know as well but uh, two minutes on the clock and Villa Rebelli had a touch so far yeah absolutely they uh, had it initially in the uh, literal f first few seconds of the game but ever since then it's been City possession just trying to work their way through this uh, defensive setup for Villa so far in this game a foul on Phil Foden down the left hand side Callum Chambers nudging him in the back and those sorts of fouls Steven Gerrard won't like today no he won't I mean I you could argue is it is it really a foul I mean it's, he's coming in from the side there Chambers doesn't really get to any of the balls so uh, from that point of view I can tell you as well that we do have an early goal in the uh, Premier League and once that filters through to the Etihad they'll probably be a little bit more relieved because it is an early goal for a Wolverhampton Wanderers at uh, Anfield as soon as we get the goal scorer there we will let you know but that's certainly not the start that uh, Jurgen Klopp side uh, would have been looking for free kick to City then whipped in by De Bruyne it's uh, aimed at the near post I think Fernandinho was the intended target uh, playing his last game of course for Manchester City today yeah absolutely will uh, be retiring after today as we just see our screens pop over to the game at the out town field as Jimenez squares one across the box tapped into the back of the net by Pedro Neto I mean for all that City might do it's all on Liverpool to win isn't it and uh, of course the news has filtered through to the Etihad a few uh, laughs and grins inside uh, the, from the citizens they're uh, even uh, doing some few gestures in the crowd saying that <laughs> Liverpool are bottling it, aren't they? Well, they are absolutely. I mean, that, that's what it's all about on the uh, on the final day. I think that uh, from City's point of view, they certainly knew that they had to win against Villa to be sure. But uh, to see that early goal go in for Wolves, it might just spur Liverpool on even more. But here comes City now as Foden tries to barge his way through towards the edge of the area. Swept away by Tyrone Mings. And his clearance ends up being a great long ball towards Oli Watkins, who's onside. Breaks into the penalty area. But that's great defending from Fernandinho. He's never going to beat Watkins for pace, just stood his ground and without even having to challenge him, takes the ball off him. Key battle, isn't it, in, the, in this game today. Antonio, of course, dominated Fernandinho last time out in London at the London Stadium for West Ham United today. Ollie Watkins, he's a quick boy, isn't he? He's very strong as well. He's just got to keep himself on side. On this occasion, though, the experience won out. He did indeed, and here comes City now down the uh, left-hand side with the uh, João Cancelo, gets to the edge of the area. Oh, and it was a clever idea. He looked like he was going to whip it across the penalty area and just cut a ball uh, towards the uh, near post for Gabriel Jesus. But uh, Sally, the Brazilian, didn't quite read it. Yeah, he thumb uh, gives him a thumbs up, doesn't he? Afterwards, Gabriel Jesus, he knows how clever that pass was and uh, perhaps uh, should have got onto that one. Of course, uh, Villa trying to play out from the back now, as you would expect, but City press so high and win it back. Yeah, it's a difficult one for Villa. They're dispossessed, and here comes Jao Cancela now, breaks into the box, to, takes a shot on, which is a charge down by Callum Chambers. Loose ball here on the left-hand side, picked up by Bernardo Silva, and he rolls it back towards uh, Rodri. Uh, sets up now for uh, Fernandinho on the half and over towards uh, John Stones who's in that uh, right-back role this afternoon. Inside now to uh, De Bruyne, back towards uh, Fernandinho. But uh, five minutes on the clock and already Lions share a possession here for uh, Manchester City, but still no work 
for the uh, Villa keeper Robin Olsen and just the one goal so far as well and that was scored by Pedro Neto as uh, Wolves lead at Anfield it's goalless in the other nine Premier League games so far it feels weird actually having all ten games being played at once but it's pretty much only the last day of the season where that would happen here's the long ball now from João Cancelo to try and pick out Riyad Mahrez and uh, Luca Dini is claiming that ball deflected off Mahrez last and the linesman agrees so perhaps a little bit of rest by here for Villa, who are in their uh, change uh, Navy away kit today. City is always uh, in sky blue at home, but uh, so far for Villa, I mean, they're, they're holding their, their own in front of the box, but they can't really get any possession. No, absolutely. It's all down to City, isn't it, to uh, press and play as quickly as possible to break down the gaps and uh, find those uh, in the Villa defence. And They won't uh, switch off uh, Villa defensively. They'll try and keep on it as, as much as possible. It's just the passing that could absolutely eat them to death, couldn't it? Uh, but... As for Manchester City, the players trying not to probably read what the situation is at Anfield, but the fans will be telling them what they uh, that uh, Wolves have taken the lead, and you just wonder if that will filter into the heads of the City players. You would expect not under Pep Guardiola, but if they step off the gas, you never lo- never know. Liverpool could turn it. They're around. only human, aren't they? And of yeah. course, in the old days, it needed a fan with a good radio to be able to get that message through and shout it down the stand. These days, of course, everybody's got an app. And they sometimes find out goals being scored before you even see them on TV. So it's very, uh, very much instant as here come uh, City now down the left-hand side with João Cancelo into Foden. Foden's ball gets a slight deflection. Robin Olsen was waiting to catch that, but Chambers doesn't want to take the chance. Heads it away to the edge of the area and Douglas Luiz now fighting to keep that in play. He does actually go out for a uh, throw in the end, but but maybe just a case of Olsen not being the regular keeper because that should have been his really. Yeah, absolutely. Martinez, apart from him, only Jed Steer has made an appearance in the league this season for Villa between the sticks so the fact that it is a new keeper communication can sometimes go out the window can't it and Olsen's already had a couple in this game where he's miscommunicated with the defenders yeah that's certainly something that uh, Villa need to keep an eye on but uh, here is De Bruyne now down the re- right hand side for uh, Man City back towards the halfway line for Emmerich Laporte he sweeps a quick ball down towards the left hand edge of the penalty area here for João Cancelo there's three waiting in the box as he dances away from uh, well he dances away there from John McGinn but then fires a ball down that uh, near post channel and that was over here there was nobody going to get on the end of that one no it's a similar ball to the one previous to Gabriel Jesus this time he'd cut inside further and tried to chop it down the line with a bit more pace and Foden wasn't on the same wavelength either I mean it's good ideas from uh, Cancelo but it's clear that his teammates are not on the same wavelength so perhaps something they've not practiced on the uh, on the practice field but uh, seven and a half minutes in goalless in this one as with the majority of the other games yeah, it is a completely goal. I just had a quick look at the uh, Brentford-Leeds game. Not a, a shot on or off target in that game uh, so far. And uh, looking at the game at uh, Turf Moor, just keeping an eye on the relegation battle. Again, no sh- no efforts uh, on or off target for either side. So it's a tentative start here across the uh, 10 games, as you would expect, as Foden tries to uh, turn and get away uh, down the left-hand side. It deflects out for a throw. Great skill here from uh, Phil Foden. Just got that ball away from Cash Foden. Uh, voted the Young Player of the Year. Would you agree with that? Uh, it, it's one of those. He's a great talent, isn't he? And it, it's all dependent on at what point of the year you perhaps pick it because there's a few other names that are up there as the ball goes over the top for City. Oh, yes. that was a close one indeed. It goes over the top there. And it was uh, getting towards the uh, edge of the penalty area. Callum Chambers and his goalkeeper almost collided. It's Fernandinho with the quarterback-style ball from the halfway line. And in the end, Olsen does get his hands to it. Yeah, just going back to it. It's, it's personal preference, isn't it, with the, the shouts for individual accolades. Ac- at the end of the season I'm sure there's a couple of Chelsea boys in Reese James and Mason Mount that perhaps would have thought that they should be up there yeah absolutely it's uh, just a break off from that because the ball is played back to Robin Olsen and he very nearly gets caught out here inside his own six yard box it's uh, Callum Chambers he whips the ball back with a little bit of pace but it's still a heavy touch from the keeper there Jesus uh, closes him down but again you can't do that in the Premier League Man City Zach Steffen found that out uh, against um, uh, Chelsea of course in that uh, Uh, FA Cup semi-final you cannot have that much time on the ball but Villa now responding with a bit of attacking possession themselves here is Jacob Ramsey finds Ollie Watkins at the edge of the area Dina is in support down the left hand side he puts a bit too much whip on that cross but it should still stay in play here on the right for uh, John McGinn McGinn's ball in is a good one an attempted diving header there from Coutinho and it's his uh, fellow countryman Fernandinho that gets his head to it and it's away for a Villa corner. Absolutely. They look dangerous, don't they, on the break, Villa? You have to say, I mean, it's the first time we've really seen them, but they're throwing bodies forward. McGinn from midfield getting in towards that front post. I tell you what, Coutinho is not far away from it. He's a short man, isn't he? And he's thrown everything at that a couple more inches sort of height on him and he's nodding that one into the back of the net. He is. Steven Gerrard grimacing there when he saw how close that was. But uh, Villa now have a corner and uh, potentially this may be a way in against uh, Manchester City trying to uh, disrupt things uh, from a set piece. And it's going to be the uh, left foot of Adina from the right-hand side. He takes it short 
in towards uh, Coutinho. He then lays it back towards the edge of the area. It's McGinn with a looping ball into the box, headed away by Xiao Cancelo, kept alive by Callum Chambers. De Bruyne gets a foot to it, still kept alive though, and uh, still a chance here for Villa. Chambers then fires the ball into his own teammate, and there's going to be a break in player because it looks like that uh, Dini has been caught flush in the face there. Yeah, absolutely. I think it was his own teammate that smashed the ball was. forward yeah, absolutely there. absolutely right, yeah. And he's gone down to the ground. It looked as though he was out cold initially. He is now awake and he's holding his own faces. He's receiving treatment for the medical staff. I just wonder whether this is going to be a forced head injury change so early on. Well, we'll wait to see. I mean, Villa have got uh, quite a young bench. There's quite a few names on there that I've not seen before, I must admit. And uh, it just shows that Steven Gerrard is trying to get a few. But, I mean, Dini was only over on that side because he took the short corner. And he was actually sort of making his way back over to his uh, preferred left-hand side. He laid the ball off to Chambers. And then, Cha ooh, that is right. He sort of caught him right on the chin there as well. So, uh, I mean, there's no way Dina could have expected that because he actually laid the ball off to the man who then ended up hitting him with yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. It's, uh, it's almost like a, a boxer's right hook, isn't it, across the chin there. It's a real nasty one. I mean, if it is to be a forced substitution, you'd look at Ashley Young, wouldn't you? The experience of him off the bench, of course, former Manchester United player. So it looks like we've had a goal in another game. We have indeed. It's... Uh, Chelsea that have taken the lead uh, at home to Watford. Kai Havertz uh, with the goal. Chelsea pretty much uh, sewn that third place up in a win today, of course, with just uh, rubber stamp that. Uh, as you mentioned, that uh, Ashley Young is on the bench. Another potential option, I suppose, Traore. He's more of a forward, really, on that uh, left-hand side. Uh, but, yeah, there's uh, a few less-known names. The full uh, Villa bench is uh, Sissin Salo. Uh, Crisani, Sanson, Chukumeka, uh, Ings, Young, Nakamba, Traore and uh, Iro. Iroga Boonham, I must, must admit, I've not uh, seen that, uh, that youngster before. But uh, City, they've got a couple of youngsters on the, on their bench as well. Uh, so the, the, going through the entire bench, it's uh, Gundogan, uh, Palmer, Zinchenko, Ake, uh, McAtee, Walker, Grealish, Sterling and uh, goalkeeper Carson. And uh, we can see Emiliano Martinez. Uh, from what we understand, is that right, Matt? He actually asked not to be picked today. Is that is that correct? I, I've heard conflicting rumours. I've heard Stephen Gerrard saying it was a knee injury. I've seen other people reporting that he just wants to be fit for the game for Argentina against uh, Italy on June the 1st. Of course, the winners of the Copa America against the, uh, the winners of the, the Euros. So it's one of those. I June don't the, quite know. June the 1st, though, it's not like in two days, is it? No. It's, it's, it's a week. Is it week tomorrow? A week, 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 on, uh, <laughs> week on Tuesday. So he's got a long time there, I think. And... Uh, I mean, the journey to, to, to the game in itself is already going to take a bit out of him. So I, I do wonder if perhaps uh, maybe it's one of those where he's hinted to Steven Gerrard that he might want the day off. And Gerrard's perhaps been a little bit disappointed with that response. So he said he's got an injury and he's put in Robin Olsen. But uh, yeah, that stat we just saw there of the last uh, 76 games that Villa have played. Martinez has started 75 of them. But now it is uh, played back towards the edge of the... Uh, Manchester City penalty area, 13 minutes gone, independent of tube studio commentary. Goalers here at the Etihad, goalers pretty much everywhere else apart from Stamford Bridge and uh, Anfield. Yeah, and Dina is okay to continue, but it's moments like that that split the minutes of the games, isn't it? Of course, they all start at exactly the same time, at round about four o'clock. But when it comes to the second half, they don't necessarily all start at the same time. They don't. I'm not, I have to, doing commentary on foreign links. I have seen it a couple of times where they actually make all the teams wait to kick off at the same time in the second half. I've also seen it a couple of times where they only pair up the game. So like let's say there's two teams or two games that affect relegation. They'll make sure that those two yeah. games start at the same time. Perhaps not worrying about the games where it's more of a dead rubber. But uh, yeah, of course, as you say, they all start at the same time and it's only going to take one injury, uh, one delay, and that's going to be thrown out of sync. But uh, certainly for the last three or four minutes, Robin Olsen's virtually seen nothing in front of his own box. Yeah, he just received the ball there and just pumped it straight into the crowd at the Etihad, didn't he? And, and he's just got to not take a chance now, has he, after that previous moment? Absolutely. Yeah, watching the uh, League One playoff final yesterday, a horror show for uh, David Stockdale with the Wickham goal, letting a goal in that was pretty much fired straight at him. And then the next couple of saves he made, you could see he was just a little bit nervous. He was fine by the end of the game, although indeed uh, Wickham did end up uh, losing the game. Sunderland now are back in the championship as John McGinn. Well, a ball is fired into the Man City penalty area and uh, McGinn seemed to have all the time in the world to nod this back to Robin Olsen, but he just put far too much pace on that and it's away for a corner. Yeah, it was into the air off Dina of all people, his head after just going down and John McGinn took his time. I think he was trying to find the goalkeeper, keep the ball off target, get too much uh, fire on the ball, didn't he? It's just gone wide for a corner. Yes, well, Manchester City have scored 22 goals from set pieces this season, which puts them first in the lead, and have conceded only one, which also puts them first in that stat. As a good punch away there, though, from Olsen. It was a strong uh, save from the goalkeeper after ball whipped in by De Bruyne. And then uh, Gabriel Jesus, a bit theatrical in the way that he hits the deck, and that's what Michael Oliver thinks as well. He waves it away. Chance now for uh, Villa to go on the counter. Great play here from Matt Cash. Skips past the two City players, but there's that man again, Rodrigo. 
doing what he does best in that uh, defensive midfield role. Wins the ball back and uh, goes back towards uh, Edison. But City do need to score it because Villa are up for this. You can see that. Yep, absolutely. We've almost gone 15 minutes into this game, but Villa are trying to counter attack as quick as possible. It was good skill, wasn't it, from John McKinn down on the near side after that shout for a foul from Gabriel Jesus. I think to uh, agree with you, it, there was a little bit of a foot in, wasn't it, from Brendia? Pulls his hands up, but as you said, he went down a bit too theatrical. He did. The, the contact with Brendia wouldn't cause the fall that. Mm. that uh, Jesus then did and I think Michael Oliver was uh, very wise to that Brazil against Argentina though. <laughs> yes absolutely <laughs> indeed yes as uh, of course uh, speaking of referees it's uh, Mike Dean's uh, last uh, game in charge is he at Stamford Bridge is he Mike Dean I'm trying to remember where Moss he might be but um, John any... Moss as well John Moss as well of course as, uh, as uh, yeah it is Mike Dean is at, uh, at Stamford Bridge uh, this afternoon Austria's uh, referee in career, not everyone's favourite, but then let's face it, do we? Do, do any of us have a favourite referee? They all end up winding us <laughs> up at some point, don't they? But uh, getting back to that, just, just, just to finish pretty quickly on the referees, it is very telling that there is no uh, English official being called up for the uh, Qatar World Cup in terms of VAR. So yeah. that just shows that <coughs> perhaps the rest of the <coughs> footballing world has realised that our VAR still leaves a little bit to be desired. Yeah, you don't see them in the uh, latter stages of the Champions League or the Europa League these days at, at the moment either. Yeah, with these uh, random handballs they keep giving, but here comes City now with a chance as uh, but De Bruyne tries to thread a ball through towards Foden. Foden does win the race there against Cash, but he can't turn towards goal. He goes back towards João Cancelo, and now it's with Riyad Mahrez as uh, Cancelo down the uh, left-hand side. Mahrez on the overlap, he's got some space, brings the ball into the box, drops a shoulder, then plays it along the six-yard box. De Bruyne was waiting, Dina with the challenge. Bernardo Silva now has the ball at the edge of the area, goes back towards uh, João Cancelo, and he's got uh, a couple of options, goes back towards Rodri, and then back towards the halfway line. I can tell you that Dejan Kulisevsky has given Tottenham the lead away at uh, Norwich, knowing quite a few Arsenal fans. They were all hoping for some sort of miracle at Carrow Road, but Spurs and the way they've been playing on Antonio Conte, you always fancy them there, really. Yeah, absolutely. You, you fancied them to get top four after the horrible results from Arsenal against Spurs. Yes, yeah, so Arsenal have uh, fallen away in the last few weeks, but here comes City again as uh, the ball from uh, Bernardo Silva to João Cancelo. I thought it was good enough, and uh, Cancelo, I think, just wanted a bit too much time on it. It's away for a goal kick. Yeah, just didn't fancy it, didn't he, initially on his left foot, but great skill from Mahrez just before, wasn't it? That was Pep Guardiola's Man City summed up in one move apart from Absolutely. the finish. De Bruyne yeah. getting in at the far post. Great skill from Mahrez. Manigash had to uh, dive into it. He just keeps his head, doesn't he, Mahrez, and finds the back post. Perhaps could have fed it even closer towards Robin Olsen, but instead Luca Dean kept right alive and flicked the ball away. He did. He did well there, Luca Dean. He's uh, clearly not been uh, too affected by that uh, head injury. As uh, we see now, the, uh, the goal for Spurs, it was a ball over the top, which was taken down by Bentacore. Very uh, unselfish there. Rodrigo Bentegor could have easily scored that himself, but he lays it off to Kulisevsky, who uh, does get the goal for uh, Spurs, who now lead away at uh, Norwich City. And 18 minutes gone here, but it's still goalless. Confirmation as well that as it stands, Spurs are now four points clear of Arsenal and have a much more superior uh, goal difference as well. So it really would take something quite special uh, for Spurs to fall away now, considering that uh, they're leading at uh, Carroll Road. But it's still a pretty quiet afternoon across the uh, the rest of the Premier League games. There's still goalless between Brentford and Leeds and uh, no efforts on goal in that game. 18 minutes gone and looking at the game at uh, Turf Moor, same again, no efforts on goal. So it just shows you that the two relegation games are very tense so far. Yeah, for all it's promised, nothing too much so far. Spurs cleaning up, Liverpool not winning. It, it's going the way it started. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, here comes City again now. They've not really been able to test Robin Olsen. They've tested his defence a number of times. But uh, in the meantime, I can confirm that uh, it looks like there's a penalty to Newcastle at uh, Turf Moor. So that potentially... Uh, does uh, just spice things up in that relegation battle as Pep Guardiola in his uh, unique style they're clapping trying to get his uh, players uh, motivated but he'll be a little bit worried because this is the sort of game that City sometimes struggle with where they start really strong but don't create the chances they somehow, sometimes run out of steam a little bit I think he can sense a little something the fact that the players definitely have heard the crowd that Liverpool were not were, were losing and I think he wants his team to rev it up a little bit to get back into the game. Absolutely. Well, we're hearing that there's a goal, there's a, a penalty for Newcastle. There's potentially a goal at uh, the Brentford Community Stadium for Leeds. We're just waiting for confirmation of that. But uh, in the space of a minute, things could really uh, completely reverse themselves in that uh, relegation battle with Leeds taking the lead at Brentford. Leeds have taken the lead uh, at uh, Brentford on 19 minutes. So if uh, Newcastle then uh, confirm this, uh, convert this penalty. All of a sudden, Burnley look uh, in serious trouble. But for the time being, things have just slowed down here at the Etihad Stadium with the uh, City in possession now moving uh, down the right-hand side towards uh, John Stones. 
Stones uh, playing it back in towards uh, Fernandinho. And then he switches play over towards the left-hand side, taken down by uh, Zhao Cancelo. Under pressure here from Cash, goes in uh, towards uh, Gabriel Jesus. Jesus then uh, back towards uh, Bernardo Silva. De Bruyne into the penalty area. Is Jesus going to get there? He gets a touch on it, but he's already out of play by the time he gets there. And uh, the penalty has been scored, Matt. Yep, so it's a handball against uh, Collins for Burnley, tucked away by uh, Newcastle. Just seeing it looks like Callum Wilson, doesn't it? Bottom right-hand corner puts uh, the Magpies ahead at Turf Moor. Not sure yet who is the lead goal scorer. We'll see that one. But back to the Etihad. City are making way down this left-hand side. They fancy their chances, don't they? They do. It's uh, youngster Joe Geldhard that scored the goal for uh, Leeds United. They get uh, a quick... Uh, a view of that goal as well in a moment but for the time being as, as it was before but Man City with all the possession but not making too much progress in terms of getting forward De Bruyne now over towards Stones down the right hand side Stones in towards uh, Riyad Mahrez Mahrez been stood up here by uh, Luca Dina just having to hold the ball up and then switches play over towards uh, João Cancelo down the left hand side he goes in towards Foden Foden back towards uh, Lemerick Laporte, switching play now over towards the left hand, over towards the right hand side I should say, Stones heads it down for De Bruyne, it's uh, Stones again inside now towards uh, Rodrigo, under pressure there from uh, Douglas Deweese and Douglas Deweese dispossesses uh, Rodrigo in the end, uh, Villa now back in possession here with Cash but he's under pressure straight away from Jesus who does get the final touch. And it's out for a uh, throw to Man City. Oh, so a throw to Aston Villa, although Jesus doesn't agree with that. No, yeah, he was chasing down against uh, Matty Cash there. Pep Guardiola can't believe it either. He's telling his team once again to keep up those energy levels and follow Jesus in the pressing. But that's what Douglas Weiss is so good at, isn't it? Getting in those little spaces, dogged defending, nicking into uh, into the play and just winning the ball back. Well, the plot thickens. Uh, the goal uh, at uh, the Brentford Community Stadium has been disallowed. Uh, Joe Gelthart was uh, offside now we're still seeing a, a graphic here that shows Leeds as uh, being ahead of Burnley because of course they're still drawing at Brentford so uh, they're only a point ahead of Burnley now but uh, as I say that's a slight lifeline there for uh, Burnley it's a turf more but I always thought that it was going to be a tough one for Burnley if Newcastle scored first because they just got a bit more resilience about them now over the past uh, 10 games or so and Eddie Howe, of course, had a very short and unsuccessful time at Burnley. So there's a little bit of a, a personal gripe there as well, potentially. But uh, here at uh, the Etihad, here come uh, City again now with uh, Rodrigo over towards John Stones. Edge of the area. Now Stones is crossed, gets a big deflection of uh, Felipe Coutinho. And that is out uh, for a corner kick. I'll just uh, see this corner kick out, then head over to a uh, map for the remainder of this uh, first half. And uh, just waiting now to uh, whip this ball in from the uh, right hand side. Is this going to be uh, De Bruyne with uh, an outswinger? Or, uh, potentially, it is going to be, uh, in fact, Riyad Mahrez with the in-swinger. Lifts that one towards the uh, six-yard box. Comfortable save for Robin Olsen. So with 23 minutes on the clock, it is Man City nil, Villa nil, and it will be Matt to take us through to half-time. Yeah, perhaps a little bit more intensity needed in this game from Manchester City, but over the last couple of minutes, Robin Olsen has done well to grab a couple of uh, balls into the box. There's claps all around the ground at the Etihad, but here come Villa on the counter. Buendia fires it square in towards Coutinho. It's to uh, cut to the right-hand side. He miscontrols it, but it's taken over by the Argentine. Driving forward, Buendia out to the left-hand side. Here's Dina. Looks to fire it into the front post. Edison punches it out. Then Manchester City turn away, and De Bruyne driving through the middle. He skips past uh, Douglas Luiz with ease. He's driving towards the uh, Villa defence here. He's got man right, man left. The PFA player of the year still comes with it. Slips at the edge of the box. Taken over by Jesus. Play still goes on, lays it to Foden, looking to go to his right hand side, strikes and it's just wide of the mark. Just wide of the mark and in just that very second Liverpool have an equaliser at Anfield so things are starting to heat up nicely. I mean, I must, I must admit, we talk about the commentator's curse. The, the, sec, the split second you said the PFA player of the year, that's the <laughs> second that De Bruyne actually slipped and fell with the ball. But uh, still still managed to recover it and City still managed to get a shot away in the end. Yeah, it was three on three, wasn't it, uh, with De Bruyne driving the ball. I, I think he's so spoiled for options, didn't quite know which way to go and just turned and, as, he, as I say, just slipped. But, but even managed to pass the ball as he was falling. Yeah. He still managed to <laughs> save it and Foden on his uh, weaker right foot. Not too far away at all. Gets a deflection. The corner kick is whipped in. But the uh, clearance is completely sliced there by uh, Buendia. Out for another corner. Yeah, Buendia was assured that he'd not knocked it into his own goal. But I tell you what, it could have been close. As we'll see a replay here as Thiago flicks one through to Sadio Mane. In behind Conor Cody, of course. Liverpool man Mane rather scuffs that one into the back of the net. But it'll do for Liverpool. Yeah, he's sort of uh, the, the uh, Wolves keeper disappointed to be beaten at his near post in the way that he did. But Liverpool certainly won't care. Uh, as it stands now, they are only uh, points uh, behind uh, City. 
And of course, uh, things can still work as the ball comes in from De Bruyne, headed away by Dina. Yeah, Dina, the uh, furthest man in the box, but it'll be put back in as Tyro Mings then clips one away as well. It went through his legs, that uh, previous Foden shot. And as uh, they were clapping and uh, cheering earlier, the Manchester City fans that Liverpool were losing, I'm sure there'll be a few nerves now because it's back to stalemate. Yes, it certainly is. It certainly is now a real... Uh, so, so certainly from City's point of view they won't be too worried about Villa get going forward because Villa haven't really done anything in terms of attack but whilst it's still 0-0 there's always that chance of a loose pass a penalty or something like that a deflection so uh, as we can see the stats just three shots from City in the game so far all of them have been off target Villa haven't had an effort on goal and City with 74% possession yeah absolutely Foden probably coming the closest to a goal just nicking one wide Mares, of course with a brilliant cross from the left hand side after some fancy feet on the byline of course Villa had an attack themselves which almost saw Coutinho onto the end of a cross but uh, that one was just a little bit too far ahead of him as so we go 25 and a half minutes gone in this game and the other games around the ground in the Premier League independent unofficial off tube studio commentary as De Bruyne has the ball on the left hand side just plays it into Bernardo Silva maybe a little bit of rotation in the middle of the park for City now as Buendia presses just about gets beaten to the ball by De Bruyne who turns quickly in midfield drives forward with it again feeds it out to the right hand side here comes Stones in that right back position that he's made his over the last few weeks with Walker being out injured as Bernardo Silva on the ball of course Stones back into the lineup today as it looks as though there may be a penalty at the Emirates to the home side. Of course, Arsenal just need to get ahead and keep the pressure on Spurs and hope that Norwich do them a favour, but it's looking a little bit unlikely. Yeah, you, you feel as though Arsenal have, have done the damage to their season already. Yeah. They were in a stronger position than Spurs, and uh, the, the amount of defeats they've had over the last seven or eight games really has uh, uh, tampered their season somewhat. But uh, as I say, if they were to beat Everton, or at least be in front against Everton, whilst Spurs are only a goal up at Norwich, there's still half a chance for them. Stranger things have happened. Uh, Fernandinho plays it out to the right hand side once again Manchester City just comfortable on the ball Villa trying to get as close to them as possible as Coutinho presses Rodri goes down himself but play continues Stones then sweeps the ball out to the left lovely ball into the Portuguese João Cancelo up against Maricash just chops inside looks to shoot maybe no cuts back onto his left opens up a space it's deflected away John McGinn helping back there then Douglas Luiz raises towards it he's been pressed though by Foden has to drop it back to Cash who will then clear his lines and go long up towards Watkins who's hoping for a little bit of a miracle great header from Laporte just nods it to Fernandinho once again it's uh, Manchester City who will come out from the back there's too much space in these lines for Villa now as Mares comes forward with it down the right he goes into Jesus Foden in at the front post it's smashed to the goalkeeper who just drops it for a moment I think it goes through his hands hits himself in the nose and then he lands on the ball he does I mean it's disappointing from Jesus that he's firing at the near post he should just try and get this ball back to Foden there's never any chance of that ball reaching Foden it was always far too close uh, to a Robin Olsen who as you said uh, seems to have Oh yeah, he's, he almost looks like a keeper that's not too sure about how to make a save there because he sort of put his hands out. It's what you always got warned about when you played cricket. Don't try and catch <laughs> the ball with you know with your hands above your head kind of thing. And it was almost a sort of a footballing equivalent of that. But it's Gabriel Martinelli, by the way, that's uh, given Arsenal the lead against Everton from the penalty spot. So uh, look, running down the games very quickly, it is Arsenal 1, Everton 0. Brentford against Leeds is goalless. Brighton against West Ham is goalless. Burnley trail at home to Newcastle by a goal to nil. Chelsea are leading against Watford by a goal to nil. It's 0-0 nil -nil between Palace and Man United. 0-0 nil -nil between Leicester and Southampton. Wolves, uh, sorry, Liverpool against Wolves is 1-1. Man City here against uh, Villa is goalless. And Spurs lead away at Norwich. So it's been a, a slow start in the Premier League so far today in terms of goals being scored. It has, but it's not had its uh, shortage of drama already, Absolutely, has it? Yeah, With Leeds' yeah. goal being ruled out through VAR. I mean, we're not even halfway through the game. Uh, half an hour, sorry through the games yet so much more to come this afternoon Robin Olsen just uh, having a word with referee Michael Oliver at the moment to just uh, see exactly how things will continue because of course a player who goes down with a head injury usually gets taken off for some head injury assessments but he's a goalkeeper he is so you can't obviously do that they have to sort of uh, make their decision on the spot as to whether he's okay to play on it was more of a sort of facial blow, blow to the face rather than a full-on uh, sort of uh, head injury there but uh, he seems to be OK, Olsen and uh, Villa still insisting on playing out from the back. Yeah, Ming's just going back to the keeper once again. The Swede inside his own six-yard box this time. Clears it out to the right-hand side for Cash. But just about hits it right. Bernardo Silva puts off Matty Cash, though, by misreading it. And in the end, the uh, now Polish right-back uh, couldn't con uh, control that one down, could he? As uh, now Fernandinho come forward, comes forward with the ball, fires it in towards Mares That uh, beats him and will go out for a throw-in or a goal kick just about for Aston Villa but uh, yeah you used that uh, cricket analogy just before about the ball going through your hands hitting yourself in the face I've had 
uh, personal uh, <laughs> um, rec uh, recollections of that happening to myself <laughs> in training. It's not a nice blow, and we'll see how Olsen reacts to it. But uh, it was, that was never going to happen to me because the, the ball, I, I would have dropped it before it was in that position anyway. <laughs> but uh, no, you're absolutely right. It's, uh, it's one of those you've got to be very careful of. And Villa, for the first time in about 10 minutes, have actually got some possession in the city half and have won themselves a free kick. Yeah, well, Olsen, after that knock, was calm inside his six-yard box, playing out to Matty Cash, and that calmness has just spread to the team a little bit. Just inside the city half, it's Douglas Lewis who will take the free kick, drops it back to Mings, he goes over the top, down the left-hand side, searching for Luca Dean. Stones gets himself in front, chests it down, has to put that one out for a, uh, a throw-in, sorry, as Dean just gave him a little nudge in the back, and Villa down the field on the left-hand side. And he will be taking the throw-in by Dean, back to Ramsey. Fielder tries to find Mings but slightly miss kicks it and in the end Callum Chambers has to go back to his goalkeeper Olsen once again he looks to smash this one downfield slices it perhaps down the right Matty Cash is up there loses out to Cancelo it's picked up by Douglas Luiz he nipped it off his teammates toes and now here comes Jesus coming forward one on one with Mings chops inside his right foot strikes towards goal deflected off the England centre half is it no it was just scuffed and it's behind for a goal kick it's uh, behind for a goal kick De Bruyne is not happy here he wanted this ball threaded through to him and uh, we'll see from this replay, it's a good header from João Cancelo and then a real uh, mistake there between the uh, two uh, Villa players, Douglas Luiz and Callum Chambers. Uh, Jesus profits, profits from that and yeah, it's just a very scuffed effort there and he could have been looking for De Bruyne as well. Yeah, it was a, a poor effort from Gabriel Jesus in the end, that's why I thought it was a deflection but it wasn't quite. Arsenal 2-0 up now against Everton at home and that one's Eddie and Ketia with that second goal. Yeah, so Ketia with the goal but we're also getting that... Uh, indication that there might be a second goal for Spurs mm. away at uh, Norwich so uh, potentially that's a goal for Arsenal just there to keep them in the in the hunt but uh, Spurs looks like they're getting the job and Michael Oliver has now uh, called over Villa captain Tyrone Mings and I can only assume the way that Mings has just beckoned at uh, Robin Olsen that already in the first <laughs> half the referee feels he has to warn Villa about wasting time yeah absolutely as uh, Watkins takes down the uh, goal kick but uh, his chest can't find uh, Coutinho gets a good toe in there plays it back to Dina inside to Douglas Luiz of course the former Manchester City man fires it back to his goalkeeper Olsen once again and boy will Everton be happy that they've avoided relegation before today of course an Arsenal needing a win today to put pressure on Spurs Spurs are 2-0 up now as De Bruyne chest one down on the right hand side of the field in and around the edge of the box here's Mares one on one with Mings who's being dragged out to the flank it's crossed into the box it's deflected goes over everybody almost Callum Chambers just about there before Jesus yes and he certainly got there before his own goalkeeper as well Callum mm. Chambers and it's just as well because I don't think Olsen would have made a save here as uh, Mares did well on that uh, uh, right hand side then stands the cross up he gets a slight deflection and uh, in the end it's uh, Chambers, yeah. I mean, Jesus was looking to head that towards goal, so it's a good job that Chambers was there. It's good positioning, isn't it, from Chambers as the corner comes in towards the far post. Once again, it's Luca Dean who turns one away this time before Stones can get there. Again, trying to keep one in play, and he thinks that he can't, so he smashes it up to Rose Ed to use a bit of time. Yeah, just in case, yeah, long uh, clearance there from John McGinn. Oh, it's no. an absolute calamity of a, of a goal here from Norwich, though, as uh, Tim Krull failed to, uh, to clear his lines. And then the ball was just a whip back into Harry Kane. And uh, if he gets an open goal, he'll score from it. So uh, Spurs two up at Carrow Road. And the good thing for Mohamed Salah, <coughs> excuse me, is that uh, it's not Son with the goal. It is Harry Kane, of course, in the race for the Golden Boots. Son just one behind Mohamed Salah. Although the South Korean has not scored a single penalty this season in that tally as Foden chases a long ball forward, just back heels it to try and keep it in play. A little bit too much spin on that one. It goes out of play for a goal kick. Yeah. 33 and a half minutes. Yes, yeah. Foden very sporting there, acting as the ball boy, making sure that Robin Olsen gets that ball <laughs> back as quickly as possible because uh, City know that uh, it's important for, for them to, to actually win this game. Uh, the longer it stays goalless, the, the more sort of nerves they're going to be that to Villa could get something out of nothing here as a uh, bit of pressure on John Stones under the ball deflects off Coutinho and uh, out for a throw. But Villa have, st have stood firm at the same time, City perhaps is lacking a little bit of uh, variation here to try, and, to try and spice things up. Yeah, absolutely. There's a few nerves on the faces, aren't they? Because they, they, they know that Liverpool at any point could get ahead and they need to win themselves. I, think, I feel as though Oli Watkins is doing well. Of course, he's, he's looking at uh, Laporte and Fernandinho and thinking, I'm going to take the 38-year-old and back into him. He's done it a number of times, chested it down really well, but not quite found either Buendia or Coutinho, who have not stayed close enough to him so far. But City are finding those spaces. They've just not quite got that clinical edge so far in this game. Of course, they may be looking to uh, PFA player of the year, De Bruyne, for some of that. But he's not received the ball from Jesus a couple of minutes ago when he wanted it. Here he comes with the ball now, though. Gives it short to Mares in a, a quick one-two. Played back to Rodri. Goes back to the centre-halves. 
as uh, Laporte will cross the ball over halfway to Bernardo Silva. Down the left is his fellow Portuguese and Cancelo chips one in behind this time. Jesus is on his wavelength. Similar ball to previous as now Jesus looks to chop back against Mings. He beats him at the front post. He gets back to his feet as the England centre half. It's headed out by Coutinho. Back in by Bernardo. Then away by Dina. Trying to take it down is Buendia. But here comes City again. Or do they? Cancelo slips. Here's uh, the Argentine running forward with the ball. Looking for Ollie Watkins in front of him. Just slows things down. Poor ball into John McGinn. In comes Rodri. Did he follow through on John McGinn? The Scott thinks so. Looked as though it was just a, a simple pass forward for me from uh, Rodri but once again City lacking that clinical edge yeah just th there is just something a little bit missing here for Manchester City I think Guardiola would uh, like to see his uh, players just be that little bit more uh, creative in terms of how they move the ball around from left to right uh, so far most of the things that City have done in and around the box Villa have been able to, to counter it really yeah it's a really good turn isn't it from Jesus on this near side it's Mings who's been dragged across but once again they're in behind Callum Chambers and Matty Cash but they don't make it pay Previously, it was uh, Mares. This time, Jesus. As Fernandinho looks long down the right-hand side, looking forward for Jesus. It's flicked on by him over the top of uh, Tyrone Mings, but Callum Chambers can easily clear away. As Ollie Watkins tries to take one down, he slips, does he? Or was he pulled down? He was pulled, says referee Michael Oliver, and Villa win a free kick. Villa do win a free kick, and you can see the reaction of the uh, City fans. Normally, a free kick to an opposition team on the halfway line wouldn't get this much emotion, but they're just starting to get a little bit frustrated now because they would have thought for the amount of possession the City have had they should have had a couple of more clear-cut chances really yeah five shots in the game so far to Manchester City none to Aston Villa but they're both equal in shots on target none in this game so far as Douglas Luiz drives out from the back gets past a couple of City players still on the ball here into the feet of Ramsey who will directly run straight at the City defence trying to get in front of Rodri out to the left into towards Dina Watkins is in the box as Dina puts it across the face of goal into Matty Cash and Aston Villa take the lead at the Etihad it's a great counter-attacking goal it's the first shot on target in the game and those nerves have paid for City well, they have a first uh, effort on target. It's taken 37 minutes to see an effort on target in this game. And it's Aston Villa, who haven't had any kind of shots on goal until now. They take the lead at the Etihad Stadium. And the plot thickens on the final day here. Manchester City have been sluggish at times. They've seen a lot of the ball, but not done too much with it. Interesting that a couple of older City fans have almost got that. Oh, God, it's not this again sort of look about them. But uh, we'll see again as this move starts on the halfway line. Just far too much space here for Jacob Ramsey. He's got the freedom of that left-hand side. He finds Dina. He's got enough time to put a good cross in. Nobody's marking Cash. It's a great header from Matt Cash as well. Gets a bit of an angle on that just to make sure it's right in the uh, corner and away from Edison. It's an excellent... In fact, I take it back. He's hit it straight at Edison, who's not able to uh, actually make the save. But uh, that is a big, big goal here in the title race. Yeah, huge, huge goal from Matty Cash at the far post. Steven Gerrard... Very happy with that goal, trying to keep his emotions in check on the sidelines, as opposed to Guardiola, who sips his drink instantly and goes, right, boys, let's get to work now. Just looking at the replay, João Cancelo looked a couple of times over his right shoulder to try and see where that runner might be coming. Cash was in his blind side, wasn't he? He couldn't see him, Didn't went see on him. his left shoulder and then knocks it in the back of the net. Absolutely, yes. As uh, we can see now that uh, Palace have taken the lead at home to Manchester United. Will Saha with the goal for uh, Palace in that game and what's proved to be a pretty sort of uh, tame uh, sort of uh, temporary ma management period for Ralph Ragnick didn't really get the sort of uh, tune he wanted out of his side but we can see the table now City are still top but only on goal difference yeah absolutely so City are still top of the table it's not all panic stations just yet for City need to keep their heads and keep playing as they were because they were creating chances just not quite finishing them not quite panic stations but I think the first alarm is starting to sound yes. somewhere isn't oh, it oh absolutely and De Bruyne was telling the fans to get behind the team as soon as that goal went into the back of the net it's seven or so minutes till the, the, the uh, half time break can City pull one back before then it's uh, João Cantelo on the ball out to the left into Bernardo Silva just drops one back in towards Cancelo once again of course this City style of play will not change in terms of the passing they will keep it short they will keep the movement quite quick but De Bruyne this time drives the ball out of play over on the far side of course City today going for their fourth title in five years it would be a back-to-back -back title once again after uh, they did that uh, the two years previous to Liverpool winning it in 2020. Well, of course, Liverpool, as it stands, well, not, if, they, if Liverpool could, could turn things around today, of course, then all of a sudden they're, uh, they're going, they, they get the domestic treble. But uh, just as we say that, there was a really good chance uh, for uh, oh. uh, Wolves at uh, Anfield going through was uh, Juan He Chan and his effort one-on-one -on -one with uh, 
the Liverpool goalkeeper into the side netting. Both teams faltering on the final day. It looks as though Wolves have had a very, very good chance there that should have stuck away. Could that be a turning point as Cash drives forward with the ball, asking for a foul as he lost out to Bernardo Silva in the end. He said he would pull back just before that. But here comes City with the ball, bringing it forward. Referee Oliver saying no free kick. Almost uh, 40 minutes gone in this game. Good ball over the top from Rodri into De Bruyne. Space now on the right hand side for City. Mares chops inside of Dina, chops inside of Luis, finds Foden on the edge, tries to feed it through to De Bruyne, picked up by the Algerian Mares once again. Plays it out to the left hand side. Cancelo, he's got an overlapping man outside the boot cross. This time Olsen sees it all the way and comes out and grabs. Yeah, just a bit too much elevation. That was the right idea from Jao Cancelo to try and put a bit more of an angle on it, trying to get it with the outside of the boot. The trouble is he lifts it too high, so Olsen was pretty much the only one obviously using his hands who could go for that. And uh, he makes a comfortable save. West Ham have taken the lead with, through Mikhail Antonio uh, with about three or four minutes to go at uh, the Amex as Fernandinho Ooh. plays a ball back towards his goalkeeper, Edison. Edison does clear it, but Ollie Watkins was not far away. He was chasing it, wasn't he? And it was the fact that he gave him a little bit of a pull, did Fernandinho. He had to be sure that the goalkeeper was getting there. I think Oliver, the referee, has said excuse me, that Edison was easily going to get there. There was no chance Watkins was anywhere near it in the end, so therefore the foul can't be given. But he took a chance, did the old centre-half, as Coutinho fires it forward into Oli Watkins once again, driving at the port, trying to go out to his right-hand side. He's on his own here. Oli Watkins strikes at goal, good defending from the port. It was good defending. I'd have to say that the, the, the angle of that shot from Watkins looked like it was going a long way wide anyway, but Laporte made sure that it were, didn't deflect into any opposition player and the City clear their lines. But now look at this. City clear their lines and Villa get the loose ball on the halfway line. Yeah, absolutely. They're just winning, winning a couple of second balls here, Villa. That confidence is flowing through the side now as Mings picks it up at centre-half. Fizzed out to the right-hand side into Matty Cash. Of course, we look back to their previous game against West Ham. 2-0 down, thanks for two goals to Jared Bowen. They got ahead, but it was ruled out. Then they had a penalty and they missed it. So uh, Manchester City will know that they can come back from this. They do, absolutely. And so they know that they have to just keep, uh, keep the game plan that they had intact. But the last few minutes, City have looked a little bit nervous. And once again, here come Villa now with Coutinho. Yeah, driving forward, 25-yard shot towards goal. Never really troubled the goalkeeper. Never looked like it was going anywhere near. He's driving straight at the defence. He looks to hit it from distance. Didn't look too assured. We just see a replay of the previous chance where Watkins nudged into Fernandinho. Ran past him as uh, Fernandinho played it back to his goalkeeper and there was certainly a tug of the arm. Watkins went down quite easily, but the ball was going to the goalkeeper anyway. He did. There's a little glance back there from Watkins towards the referee. I don't mm. think it was like a full-on appeal because there probably isn't enough contact there, but Fernandinho was taking a chance for sure. Absolutely. City coming forward though. Alders uh, played in towards the front post. Good ball. I think John Stones it was, but Olsen finally looks uh, assured in goal and comes out. And That's much him. better from Olsen and you can see that... Uh, Callum Chambers just stood behind him there as well, made sure that uh, the ball got through uh, towards his uh, goalkeeper. Just two and a half minutes uh, to go in this first half before we hit what can't be more than a minute or two of injury time. Uh, so this is not going to plan as a ball over the top in now, potentially a chance for Watkins. Watkins through on goal, one-on-one -on -one with Edison as Stones comes oh. back. He drives towards goal, what a waste that is for Ollie Watkins. He's waiting for a written invitation to shoot there. I don't know what he's waiting for, Watkins. You don't get that sort of chance at the Etihad very often where suddenly you've got 20 yards of space between you and a solitary goalkeeper and Watkins has got to do better there. Yeah, absolutely. He's just driving towards goal after just nudging Fernandinho who completely gets lost under the ball he's got to do better from that situation Watkins and I don't like to say it, he's the skipper today and it, it is his final game in the City shirt but you could perhaps put in a, a shout for uh, Fernandinho to be off at half time it brings in Chenko on brings well, he's, Stones he's in, not played many games from the start nope. this season and he almost seems like a sort of testimonial stroke exhibition to give him this run out but this is a huge game but here comes City now with Bernardo Silva yeah down the left hand side just chops back for a moment up against Douglas Luiz plays it back into the feet of Laporte inside he goes to Rodri opens up his body finds De Bruyne the Belgian's looking to his right hand side and finds the overlapping run from Stones just chops for a moment out to Mares, right hand side one on one with Dean cuts inside De Bruyne with the overlapping ring great touch into the box there's a fire one across the face of goal it's blocked back towards De Bruyne strikes it towards goal again this time it goes wide it's a corner kick but De Bruyne leading from the front yeah well it's, it's going to take something from De Bruyne here isn't it lovely little back heel there from Mares to get De Bruyne back in he was aiming at Jesus at the near post and I think that's the right decision De Bruyne it's almost like a double kiss off the, the foot of Dina as he's trying to put that cross in I think Jesus gets a back heel on it and I think it may be blocked by the defender but De Bruyne is showing his quality he is the man in this team, isn't he? That leads from the front as he crosses towards the near post. Stones can't get there. Head of the way by Callum Chambers. Picked up by Cancelo. Inside the final minutes of regulation time in this first half. We'll see how many minutes of out of time will be added on. 
referee Michael Oliver watching on as Villa are camped on the edge of their own box here, allowing Cancelo to come forward with it. Will take the invitations to act from deep, blocked away by Douglas Luiz, but only to the feet of Bernardo Silva. Now Rodri on the left hand side, not perhaps the man you want on the flank, but he comes inside now to De Bruyne. And it goes long once again, this time in towards Gabriel Jesus, and Olsen comes out. He had a shaky start to the game, but the last couple of times the ball have come into his box, he said, this is mine. Yeah, and he makes a good save, as we'll see here. Fernandinho, this is the chance that Watkins mm. had. Fernandinho completely misjudges the flight of the ball, and then Watkins ha takes a good two touches. He wants a third touch. That's too long. He should have known that at that stage somebody was going to be coming back to her to make a challenge, and fair play to John Stones. Yeah, initially he does okay, does Watkins. He turns relatively quickly, keeps himself nice and calm, but he takes a touch which is too short which means he needs, needs to take another one we've got four minutes about a time at the end of this first half I'm surprised by the that. only one I can think of is the knock to the head as Jesus comes forward here up against Callum Chambers who gets a foot in in the end the knock to the head of Olsen took a couple of minutes we had the goal celebrations that's all I can think of but we've already had half time at uh, Leicester City at the King Power Stadium so we've got uh, three and a half minutes to go as Jesus almost got through on goal there now with Foden on the left hand side Zinchenko is warming up and doing his laces on the sidelines is that a sign to the second half I wonder potentially this potentially means that João Cancelo goes to the right mm. and Stones goes into the middle and Fernandinho goes off yeah I, I think that looks a little bit more assured doesn't it coming into the second half the way that Fernandinho has just been pressed this first as Coutinho knocks one over the top of his own head just covering back against John Stones just smashes one clear left footed almost goes to halfway will go out for a throw in half time at Stamford Bridge Chelsea leading by one goal to nil against fellow Londoners Watford Norwich of course trailing at home 2-0 to Tottenham that one's also at half time as Foden takes one down beautifully out of the air over his shoulder drives into the box fires one across goal it's blocked away by Chambers chested down by Foden showing those silky young player of the year skills now with Silva edge of the box is Cancelo chance to shoot chops back on his left foot tracks towards goal it's blocked away again by Chambers who's got himself in front of everything so far today he's been excellent Callum Chambers he really has stepped up and had an excellent performance as uh, City now, well, they've still got around two minutes to try and do something in this uh, first half. It is still uh, being the game's still being played at uh, Anfield. I haven't quite been able to uh, pick up just how much injury time there is there, but certainly enough time here for City to do something. But Villa, as this half has grown, and of course they've got their goal, they've grown into the game as well, just like their goalkeeper has. Just as I say that, though, he's uh, hoofed to clearance over the head of Matt Cash. There's that uh, commentator's curse once again as the ball comes back to Laporte from the throw. Out to the left-hand side to Foden, who's grown into the game as well, as here's Bernardo Silva looking to uh, be lively on the edge of the box. It's uh, Cancelo now, left-hand side. Onto the edge of the box is Rodri, just chopped back for a moment. That methodical style of Manchester City working their way through inch by inch here's Foden left hand channel looks to chop one back it's Chambers again with the block here comes Concello once again left hand side up against Matt Cash looks to cut back on his right foot whips one into the box it's in towards the far post and Dina slices that one over his own bar you almost could have left that really Dina but from his point of view and it was all happening so quickly better to give away a corner kick than leave it and let an opposition player take it yep absolutely Dina has found himself a number of times at that far, far post cutting the ball out hasn't he it will be Maris from the right-hand side from this corner kick, so the in-swinging left foot to come. City fans on their feet looking and hoping for something to happen. It's whipped towards the far post. It's Laporte then heads towards goal. Nobody in the way of the goalkeeper's eye line. He saw it bounce in front of him, and he grasped it with grateful hands. Not a, not a strong header there from Laporte. It's a header on target, so we can note a, a shot on target from Man City, but that's only statistically, I suppose. Certainly nothing for uh, Olsen to worry about. Uh, it's pretty much uh, getting to half-time uh, in all the games. They're still playing, though, uh, at uh, Anfield. And they're into the fourth minute of injury time there. And uh, Everton have actually got a goal back at uh, the Emirates as well. Uh, the goal there, for, uh, we're still waiting for the goal scorer there for uh, Everton. But uh, just over a minute, to, just under a minute to go here in terms of uh, injury time in this game. Once again, there was Fernandinho, last man, was just able to head the ball away before Coutinho raced onto it. But Villa are open now as City look to come forward. De Bruyne firing forward towards the end of this half. He's chased all the way by Ramsey. Looks to play a ball in. No, he just goes outside to Mares. He will cut inside, surely on that favoured left foot. Then goes outside, driving through the defence. Good defensive work, doubling up there from Dean and Ramsey. It's cleared long down the left in towards Watkins he's up against two defenders as though City are getting back slowly as uh, Watkins is looking for some support and he just completely miscontrols it out of play down the left hand side and then boots the ball down the line and uh, Michael Oliver will say that's enough for the first half it's all on City to do in the second as at half time at the Etihad on the final day of the season it's Manchester City nil Aston Villa 1